Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel to listen to my affair with optical CT and gel dosimetry. I have been giving very serious lectures in my e-learning portal, that is the Pulse Classroom, and also in my YouTube channel. For a change, I thought I would tell you a story, a story that is at least two years, two decades old. The story is about how I learned gel dosimetry and how I made my first optical Kunming CT scanner for reading the dose embedded in gel dosimetry. I learned gel dosimetry during a visit to London Regional Cancer Center in London, Ontario, Canada. This is the London Regional Cancer Center that you see in the picture. In North America, the interview happens slightly differently. I was there for an interview. And the interview is slightly different from the way it happens in India. During the interview, you are made to meet the, all the connected staff. In my case, I had to meet all the physics staff there. And at the end of the day, you have a formal interview with the HR staff. This is exactly what happened to me. And during the interview, I had the opportunity to meet Kevin Jordan, whom you see with me in this picture, and who was working with gel dosimetry. He took me to his lab and showed the effect gel phantom that he had made, and also the laser scanner, as well as the code beam optical scanner that he had made for reading the dose embedded in gel phantom. After the interview, I returned to India and I was very keen to make FX gel. I got the recipe from Kevin. And since we already had FPX chemical dosimetry facility in Velo, making FX gel was not difficult. We made FX gel and irradiated and kept on showing everyone, see the nice 3D distribution that you can see with naked eye. Then we thought, why not we do an experiment? We took a syringe and filled it with FX gel and also put a catheter in so that we can connect to the beta cath equipment that has the strontium 90 source in it. We irradiated this gel phantom with the strontium 90 so beta source. And then we wanted to look at the dose distribution. Since we didn't have the optical scanner, we got permission to use the MRI scanner from radiology department and did an MR scan of this. We were so excited to see the dose distribution on the MR images, as you can see here. These are the transverse images and the sagittal images of the phantom. It was a pity that we didn't know that we had to do a pre and a post scan. We did only the post scanning of the gel. It was, however, it was very interesting. We could measure the length and see it was correct. And I presented it in a conference in Chennai in the year 2000, and it was very well appreciated and received by the delegates. Subsequently, I got selected at the London Regional Cancer Program, and I joined there on a two-year contract in 2001. Once I went there, I was very keen to learn gel dosimetry. I went and talked to Kevin about it. I told Kevin that I would like to learn gel dosimetry to learn, can I be your gel maker? Kevin was good enough to agree to that. And I will make gel and keep it in the fridge. Kevin will do some experiment and share the results with me. We both became very good friends and we continue to be in touch even today. There was a conference in Canada in which we were asked to present something. I thought, why not I present on gel dosimetry? I was the principal phys physicist at London Digital Cancer Centre for brachytherapy. I was the main physics person in brachytherapy, and we had a vaginal mold with the two different types of shields for the rectum. One was a stainless steel, the other one was the tungsten, as you can see in this picture. I thought, why not we irradiate this with gel and see the dose distribution with stainless steel and tungsten? I made gel phantom and did a pre scan with the laser scanner of Kevin uh, with the vaginal mold fixed in the gel phantom. And then after pre-scan, I irradiated first with the stainless steel uh, shield and then with the tungsten shield. And we got the dose distribution. You can see the two dose maps. It, I have not labeled them, which is tungsten shield and which is stainless steel shield. And I'm sure from the distribution, you can make out this is stainless steel and this is tungsten. Even when I presented in the conference, I didn't label and told the delegates to find out which is stainless steel, which is tungsten. 
everybody went into a big laughter and this work was very much appreciated. It was well appreciated that after two years when I left Canada, they made a mug and printed these distributions on it and gifted that to me. You can see the mug with this distribution printed, which I still keep with me. And you can also see Jake and Jerry in that meeting, in the you know, farewell meeting for me. And I returned to India again after the two years of stay in London, Ontario. I wanted to make a gel lab and a gel dosimetry system in CMC London. Making gel was not a problem because we had already done and we have the infrastructure to make because we had a PX chemical dosimeter. But reading gel was a problem. We can't get time in MR scanner. It was something next to impossible in CMC value to get time for research in MR scanner because of the heavy patient workload. So I decided to make a simple optical cone beam CT scanner. So that was my aim, to make a simple optical cone beam CT scanner. I looked at what all I need to make an optical cone beam CT scanner. I need an aquarium with a turntable and a stopper motor and a driver for it. I needed a cylindrical container for gel and a light source and also a camera to capture the light transmitted through the gel and of course a software to do the CT reconstruction of the data that we acquired from the camera. I made an aquarium first. Making a perspex aquarium is not difficult for a physics guy because we make so much perspex phantom. I made it with a very thin wall, but I made it with a turntable, a graduated turntable, and fixed a stepper motor for it and had a stepper motor driver. Using a stepper motor was not a difficult thing for me because I had used stepper motor during my PhD days for my 2D scanner. The stepper motor that you see here is that I dismantled from the 2D scanner. And I already had the circuit which was downloaded from the internet using ULN 2003 to drive the stepper motor. It actually drives using the parallel port. You can get the whole thing, whole circuit now for 33 rupees, but those days I had soldered it and it's still being used in CMC. Now that I have the turntable table with the stepper motor driver, everything, the next thing I wanted was a gel container with a cylindrical factor. Kevin used a Teflon container because he found the Teflon to be very suitable for optical scanning, but I couldn't get Teflon here. So what I did was I went and looked at different bottles and finally found the Pepsi bottle had a plain portion at the midpoint and had some impression on top and bottom. So I cut the top and bottom, used the central portion as my gel container. What you see is a, is a Pepsi central portion of it, Pepsi bottle central portion. I told my friends, you guys go and drink Pepsi, but give and give me, come and give me the fan bottle so that I can use it as a container for my gel phantom. This we used for quite some time till the Pepsi fellows decided to change the shape of the bottle with more impressions like this at the middle uh, without our permission, without our knowledge, and we cannot use it. Now we use some peanut bottle, which was donated to us by uh, Kevin. This is what you see is the gel that we made, and this is the recipe. I'm not going to talk about the recipe now. We will discuss sometime later how to make gel. And this is the Pepsi bottle which was cut, and I put a lid on top at the bottom to hold the gel. Now that I have the container, the gel turntable, the aquarium, the next thing I needed was a light source. I made a very simple light source, as you can see here. This one has got tungsten bulbs in a matrix of nine by nine. And I also fixed a green filter because I wanted green light. It is not very perfect, but it's fine, okay? And then I now needed a camera to capture that image. I didn't have a good camera, but I had my first webcam. I still have it, right? This is a beautiful camera. The webcam that I bought in, La I think, London, Ontario. It had a software which can acquire the images. Right. The software is such you can configure it so that it acquires at regular interval. What I did was I synchronized the image acquisition as the stepper motor and the stepper motor rotation so that for every degree it acquires one image and the stepper motor rotates by one degree. Right. And thus I could get 180 images for reconstruction. Now I have every hardware in place. I have the aquarium, I have the 
light source and I have the camera. Next, the only thing I now need is the software to do the reconstruction of the data collected. CT reconstruction. How do I do that? I use MATLAB and the IRADON function implemented in MATLAB. IRADON function is meant for parallel beam geometry, not for cone beam geometry. But however, since the cone angle is very small, I, I thought it is not going to make a big error, but it will certainly show you a distribution in the way we want. And I used the IRADON function and developed a small code that reconstructs the data accurate by the thing. So this is the pre-scan that you can you see now on this picture uh, before uh, irradiation and we get 180 uh, images of this at 180 degrees rotation. And we irradiated the gel with a five by five field, a direct cobalt beam. And we did the post-scan again, the same optical component CT scanner got 180 images. Now I have the pre-scan and the post-scan, both 180 image set. We took only the central axis and looked at the profile at the central axis. The, the red one is the pre-radiation, there is no depth. And these are due to the wall, okay? And the blue one is the post-radiation, the dip you see is the light absorption in the irradiated gel. Right. So now I have the pre and post. I can do the reconstruction. I have a software, MATLAB, I used the IRADON function, but I took the ratio of this negative log of I by I naught and then did the IRADON transformation to get the dose distribution. To a great surprise, I got the same five by five field here. Beautiful, right? And we were so excited about it. We could also get the dose map using the MATLAB. Now that we got all this, we can't stop there. We did a radio surgery plan and irradiated the gel to a very small beam using the narrow beam collimator and did the scan of that. You can see that this is the radio surgery plan being irradiated. And you see, this is the dose. And we reconstructed using that uh, optical quantum CT scanner and we can see the dose distribution. There are some artifacts, not very perfect with my simple optical quantum CT scanner but I think good enough to learn what is optical quantum CT scan. So this is the story about my first optical quantum CT scanner. I presented it in a dosel conference in, dosel conference in Belgium, and they were really impressed by the way we used very simple means to develop the optical quantum CT scanner. Now we have a very good upgraded one with a 540 nanometer light source, an industrial camera, and FDK-based cone beam reconstruction algorithm that our own students wrote. And we also implemented CUDA so that we can do parallel processing. All the entire gel phantom can be 400 slices can be reconstructed in less than a minute. And we also calibrated it for those and we could export it to DICOM format to the Mephisto software and compare with the TPS, you know, uh, gel dosimetry. Thank you for listening. If depends on the comments that you put, I will come up with my upgraded one and also on how to make the gel phantom. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the story of how I learned it.